busy, busy, busy. Are you a crew of one to five people who are so busy you don't have a chance to answer voicemails? Emails are building up, that inbox is beyond full. You have people asking for estimates that you went and looked at one or two weeks ago. Let me help you with this a little bit. Maybe one of these uh, five that I'm going to share will help you get some of your time back and get things, all your ducks in line. I'm Ron Ramsey, I'm a DYB coach, also a painting contractor up here in Massachusetts. I've been there. I remember the days going to work early in the morning, working late, late, uh, maybe doing an estimate or two on the way home and being exhausted and say, I'll get to those voicemails tomorrow. In fact, then worse yet, you start calling them back and you're getting their voicemails. So I wanna share these five tips hopefully save you some time, maybe get you thinking of how you can get your, your life in order, or at least your work life in order, that you can save some, save some time and get some of that back. Number one, own your calendar. What does that mean? Well, everything should have a time and a place. You know, no more of uh, answering emails when you get up, uh, listen to voicemail, checking Facebook, uh, running out to the paint store, uh, skipping exercising because you don't have any time for that. Uh, you know, saying bye to your family and you're gone. Schedule out everything you're going to do for the next week. Might sound weird, but it will work. Schedule out when you get up and you do your, we call it a jam session where you actually sit down and do things. And if you don't do that, Plan on getting up in a half hour early. What does that mean? It means shutting the TV off at night. Don't watch TV for a few nights. You'll be amazing how early you can get to bed or maybe even read a business book or something. Spend the time with the family because that TV, it's all old news anyways. Get up a half hour early. So if you're used to getting up at 6, 5.30, even get up an hour early. Get up at 5. Nobody else is up in the house. Sit down with a plan. So you sit down, maybe you write those two estimates you saw the night before. Maybe you, you, you work on something else. Maybe you balance your books for your business. Maybe you enter everything into QuickBooks. Whatever it is, work on your business for a solid half hour every single morning before anything else is done. Schedule your breakfast. Give yourself the half hour for breakfast and then schedule the rest of the day. Don't schedule your emails yet. We're going to get to that. And don't look at your phone every 15 minutes, 20 minutes throughout the day. You know something? It's not that important unless someone's calling you because they're hurt or they need your help. And that mean I mean family. So anyway, so we're going to schedule everything out on our calendar, even date nights with the wife. And it sounds weird, but she will appreciate it. Or date nights with the husband, he'll appreciate it. Do this for a week or so and you're going to notice some pressure is coming off you and you actually have time. But when you schedule those things, actually do them. Okay, number two, estimates on the spot. Why do we say estimates on the spot? And I realize that some of us, uh, I work on a lot, a lot of older homes, it's really tough to do an estimate on the spot. I like to go back and think about it and things like that. But if you're going in for a very similar job you've done before, you have your production rates in hand. They're in, your, in your, your iPad if that's what you're looking. Even if you're using a carbon copy, you should know at this point of what it's going to take. If you're going to walk in and going to have to repaint three ceilings, you know you're going to have to plastic off the place. You're going to have to move some furniture. You know a gallon of ceiling paint's $30. I'm just throwing a number out there. You know the plastic's going to cost you $25 with the tape. And it's no, you know it's going to take you a day to paint those three ceilings, maybe with a helper. So we'll throw some numbers out there. Right then and there in front of the customer or, or step back for five minutes, ask them if you can go out to your truck to for five minutes to put together an estimate to present them. They are going to be tickled pink, especially if they're still waiting for estimates from somebody else. If you do that, now you don't have anything on your plate later other than a follow-up with this, this client. They will be happy. You will be happy. You will not have to think about this again because we all know that those estimates we didn't write three days ago are weighing on the back of our mind. So if you can't get it done on the spot, even if they don't sign it and you don't, can't sell it, you have produced and given them an estimate on the spot. And if you can't do it on the spot, promise them when you're going to have it and hold yourself accountable. Promise them that you're gonna write the estimate for 123 Main Street, saying that's their address, and they will have it the next morning when they wake up. So the next morning, during your jam session, which is your half hour alone time, you're going to make sure that estimate gets done. 
No radio on, no news on, no TV on. You're sitting down and concentrating on your things. Pretty soon you're going to notice little things are getting off your plate. Your plate is getting lighter and lighter and lighter, or lightening your load. Number three, automated, automated follow-up. What do I mean by this? Uh, a lot of the email pro estimate programs we have now have automatic built-in automated follow-up. So you set it and forget it. You write an estimate, I know we use Estimate Rocket, we write the estimate, once we send it, we start a campaign. It has preloaded email follow-ups, which are very generic, very nice, and it sounds like it came from you. If you wanna tweak them and make them your own, you can do that also, and you can always add other emails in the automated process. So right now, you're following up, even if they don't choose you. You're following up. Six months from now, they might already had that job done and you don't even know about it. They're still going to be following up with that automatic email. So that's one, one way to get it off your plate and follow up after the estimate while you're working on something else. Uh, number four, voicemail. Let everything go to voicemail, especially if you're a small one or two or three person crew and you can't reach for that phone because you know you're painting something and the phone rings and you pick it up and you talk and 15 minutes go by and you promise something that you know in the back of your head, at least I was one back then, that I can't deliver that. You know, after I think about say why I was supposed to be somewhere else that day, let it go to voicemail. Let them on the voicemail hear your... Hear your description of what you do now so basically on my voicemail if you call me it says thanks for calling if you're looking to book an appointment please go to our website and I give them the thing and book your estimate at the bottom of the form and that goes to you can book me I have a series of questions that's a qualifiers and then we, we we move from there and then they actually can book it on an empty time slot that I've preset so I'm not actually running around and promising things I can't do. If I cannot um, do the estimates on the two days I do estimates, I only do estimates on Tuesdays and Thursdays. If those time slots are full, well, they're going to have to go to the next Tuesday. Uh, very, very rarely do I make a special, a special change in that to, um, to schedule more estimates. Because if your close rate is, is fairly good and you have your, your numbers and your presentation down, you're going to be closing a good percentage of what you go to because they've already gone through uh, the you can book me answered those questions you can always follow up with a voicemail after that or I'll give them a call rather uh, ask them some more questions to see if they're a fit because you only want to go on estimates that are a fit for you and your company so that's a great way to do it and then what they do is if they don't want to book an estimate or if they're looking just to leave a message you look a me uh, leave a message after that and I'll, I'll return it when I, I see fit at the end of the day I return my voicemails Auto, auto responder on the voice on your email. That's number f uh, five. So the auto responder is basically when someone sends me an email, it tells them, "Thank you very much. Uh, this correspondence, correspondence is very important to me. I re re return emails at after four o'clock during the day." or before seven, depending when I get it in the morning. So I tell them when I'm going to reply to their voice uh, email. So they're not waiting. I don't have to keep looking at my phone every time it goes off. We still get notification the email comes in, but they've already got a response back. So that takes the pressure off that. And then once I said that, that jam session in the morning, you can quickly go through your emails, put a jam session at night, maybe 15 minutes, a half hour, answer the emails then. Sounds like, oh wow, I don't have time for all this. But you're opening up your schedule so you can actually do the work when you're, when you're doing the work, especially if you're a hands-on painter. Uh, number six, a virtual assistant. Well, it comes to a point where a virtual assistant or at least a, a, a someone to answer your phones. There's answering services out there. You can give them the script to answer. We have uh, someone just recently in one of our mastermind groups who did this and it's freed his time up uh, immensely. Uh, he says he should have done that was a, one of the biggest things he's done in the last year is find and and hire a answering service for his company. But virtual assistant, so you have a lot of paperwork you, you, you're used to doing and you said I can't handle it all. Uh, maybe it's putting things in uh, project management software, or CRMs, or maybe it's entering things in the QuickBooks or, or putting together a social media campaign. These are things that take time. 
and maybe time that you know maybe you're not good at because we can't be great at everything but this virtual assistant is the way to go the way you work on a virtual assistant or answering service is actually you prepay them you have an agreement of what they're going to do what an hour costs or time slots cost maybe you're hiring a virtual assistant for four or five hours a, a week and it's amazing when someone is concentrated on five hours a week it's amazing what they can get through get through instead of you being on the computer writing an estimate Facebook pops up so you want to see what that notification is um, and then all of a sudden before you know you're watching a YouTube video you're not really concentrating but when you're hired someone to do a certain job and they do it it frees you up so this is how we got or at least I got my time back I schedule everything I have auto responders on my email I have a message on my voicemail tell them how to book an estimate of course, not everybody does book an estimate that way. I uh, get rid of all those uh, Google and Yelp and every other call that comes in. They, they don't even follow through with anything. And then some of the people aren't comfortable or they just don't know how to le um, schedule their own estimate. They'll leave a voicemail. I will call them back. I'll have my calendar in front of me when I call them back and I'll be in mind to actually have a conversation with them because I'm not only just calling to book the estimate, I wanna see if we wanna, we wanna do that kind of work. And you know, as we know, is, is a lot of people want the job done tomorrow, and currently we're booking for four months out. So if you keep all this stuff, the automatic follow-up, maybe a virtual assistant, maybe a answering service, but imagine this, with this automatic follow-up with the emails, uh, with the uh, estimate rocket or whatever you're providing, you're actually touching base down the road. So when you're slow time, and they hear from you, they're used to hearing from you, and they're remembering your name. So anyways, this is the six steps that I use that help me get my time back. I hope it helps you. Uh, if you'd like to chat, I'd love to chat with you. Um, can be found at ron at dybcoach.com. That's ron, R-O-N, at dybcoach.com. You can also find out more about DYB at joindyb.com. Uh, send me a Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Send me a message. Uh, we can either chat through uh, Messenger or we can actually you know, pick up the phone and give you a call. I can, maybe can help you out a little bit. So anyways, have a great day. Get your time back even in the busiest time of the year. Have a great day and, and happy painting.